Let's open up our Bibles to Psalm 139. If you've been with us, we've been going through Psalms. And so uh, we saw Psalm 100, how uh, at the very beginning of the month, how it, it speaks how we're commanded and designed to worship the Lord. Uh, our worship should draw others to worship with us as well. Um, we should worship Him in all thankfulness. Like we have a reason to give thanks to this Lord that we're worshiping. Um, he gives us each breath and He gives us life filled with gifts to be used to worship Him. Let's worship Him. All of us right now are worshiping something. Whether you're in here right now and you're worshiping the Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that we're all worshiping the Lord. But all of us are worshiping something. You might be worshiping a relationship. You might be worshiping your job. You might be worshiping uh, your family. I pray that we don't let those idols get in the way. I pray we all just uh, put them down at the altar and we truly just open up our hearts to worship him. My prayer is right now we're all in the posture of worshiping the Lord. So let me go ahead and pray and then we'll read Psalm 139. Father, thank you so much for already just blessing us with uh, such an awesome day to worship you. I pray that if there's someone here today who has never responded to you, Father, I pray that you would just draw them to you right now. I pray that you would hide me behind the cross. I don't want to get in the way of what you have to say. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I pray that you would just speak truth, but speak it in gentleness and love. Thank you so much for each individual here today. I pray that we would just carry this message to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 139, it says this. Uh, this is uh, to the choir master, a psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind me and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my innerward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. O men of blood, depart from me. They speak, they speak against you with malice, and malice intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And, if, and, and see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead in me the way everlasting. We, we desire to be uh, known and to, and to know other people. Have you ever known that person who knows everybody? 
You might be, uh, I, I have a friend who, man, we were talking about mutual friends. And he's like, yeah, I, I know that person. I know that person. I, I played baseball with them. I'm like, well, what about um, this person? Like, yeah, 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 I know them too. He knows everybody. And it's crazy because everybody knows him too. Who do you not know? And that's truly, I, I think that's all of us. If we're being honest with ourselves, we want to be known. We want to be somebody. There is no one, listen, there is no one who knows us more than the Lord. And there is no one who we are called to know more than the Lord. And so it's simple. I titled today, is known by the one who knows. This, this psalm truly is just, it, it broke my heart on, I was kind of finishing up on Friday as I was uh, finishing up my, my thoughts for um, my sermon, and it hit me how big God truly is. And I was just in awe. I was like, God, you know me. You know me. I'm, I'm here today to tell you that he knows you too. He truly does. He knows our children, our families. He knows the ones who never made it out of the womb. He knows them. <clears throat> we see in this psalm today that the Lord knows us more, simply. He knows us more. Verse 1, David cries out, O Lord, you have searched me and know me. Then he writes, how much the Lord knows about him. He knows when we move. Think about that. Ponder that for a minute. He knows when you move. And he knows when you stop. He knows where you go. He knows what you're going to say even before we say it. Uh, my, my wife, Amanda, there can be some times where she can complete my sentences. She knows what I'm thinking. She knows when I'm upset. She knows, man, Chase, that was just really dumb of you to say. But she knew I was going to say it. <laughs> you might have friends or spouses like this. You might ask them, uh, hey, where, where do I want to go eat? And they'll tell you. I have a friend here um, at church who he knows where I want to go eat sometimes. And we'll go. I'm not going to say no to him. <laughs> but all, all, all the things, all the knowledge that people have of us and that we have of, of each other, they don't compare. Get that in your minds. That's a simple truth, but it's a, it's a profound truth at the same time. God knows us. Get that in your head. And we're to know him the more that we spend time, the more that I spend time with Amanda, the more that I know her. I thought I knew her when we first got married, when we were dating. No, I didn't. I look back at when we were in high school and we just started dating. I had no clue what she, who she was, what she liked. Some of us are shaking our heads right now. We know that thought. We're like, man, I'm still learning more about my spouse. That's the attitude and the posture that we're to have with abiding with the Lord. We're to grow in Him more and more daily. It's a sanctification process. And let me tell you, you will never know more about God than He knows about you. That's why we have eternity to try to figure Him out. David cries out simply, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. That, think about that for a minute. 
the knowledge that God has is too high. Even climbing Mount Everest, if we reach the peak, we've just begun. Next, we see that the Lord's knowledge, it can't be escaped. <laughs> I, uh, I got a picture to show you guys. Hopefully it can be pulled up. <laughs> I looked up who the greatest hide-and-seek champion was, and this is what I found, if it can be pulled up. I'll wait. Uh, yeah, he's my, he might be hiding. Let's see. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't wait this long, but I, I just, I googled, who is the world champion of hide-and-seek? I'll give it two more seconds. Okay. It won't work. Man, it's a picture. Google it when you get home. Okay, there it is. There it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This makes, oh man, okay. Uh, a picture of Bigfoot that says, undefeated hide and seek champion. <laughs> and uh, that was just something a little funny. Honestly, it has nothing to do with today's message. Um, but I was thinking about, I was thinking about hiding from the Lord. And God knows if Bigfoot is actually real, <laughs> okay? He, he can't be hidden from the Lord, and we can't either. So why should we try? Why should we try? It was, it, when I found this, I looked at the time, and I said, oh, no, I'm late to going and uh, picking up my kids. And I said... <laughs> I simply just, I was like, God, that was so humorous, and thank you so much for revealing that to me. I pray that I will just make it on time to pick up my kids. And I was, and it was a minuscule prayer, but God answered it. So I had to, I had to tell you guys that. But anyways, um, <laughs> you can't hide, you can't play hide and seek with God. He doesn't have to count to 10 and then say, ready or not, here I come, right? We're always in God's sight. We can't escape God's sight. David cries out, in heaven, you are there. And that's, that's easy for us to think about, God being in heaven, right? We are going to worship God for who he is in heaven. We're going, to be, we're going to meet Jesus face to face one day in heaven. That's the most imper important person that you will see. I heard a really cool testimony of a lady who, um, she was actually, uh, she had her sight all of her life. And then one day, God took her sight away from her. And she was totally blind. And as I was talking to her, I was like, man, why are you, oh, really, tell me, why are you so joyful right now? And she said, because I have one job here. Even though I can't see, I still have one job, and that's to go and tell other people about him. And I can't do that if I'm just uh, upset and mad at God. I can't do that. And she said, I'm looking forward to the day when God gives me sight. Because he's the very first person that I'll see. I'm excited for that day. But think about this for a minute. David says, in Sheol, you are there. And this is, uh, David was a, a way better poet than I will ever be. He was great with his words. But th this was a, a poetic device to describe the vastness of God's sight. <clears throat> Even in hell, there will be those who can't escape the Lord's sight. Revelation 14, this is what it says. It says, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And this doesn't mean that 
Jesus, who is referred to as the Lamb, will have some sort of residence in hell, but he'll be able to see hell, and those there will be able to see him. There's a truth in, in, in this statement that those who do not repent and believe in Jesus will eternally be separated from God. That's, that's a, a, true, a truthful statement. Paul even writes in 2 Thessalonians 1.9, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. The separation is separated from all good things of God that I pray that you and I are going to experience. Separated from God's love. Separated from God's grace, His forgiveness, His mercy. All at the same time while seeing God's full wrath. God's justice, God's punishment. The knowledge of God can't be escaped. And that will truly be torment that I pray that nobody has to go through. Next, we see that it, we just need to trust the Lord's plan. Trust the Lord's plan for, for our lives. After David finds satisfaction in the Lord knowing him and recognizing the vastness of God's presence, he simply just says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. In the dark, secret place, even before my mom knew that she was pregnant with me, God was forming me and planning out all my life. Knitting, it, it takes time and concentration. I know some senior ladies in the class or in in uh, in in the church who they love to knit. I'm very thankful for them because they've knitted uh, some of my children blankets. But I wonder how long it takes them. Probably a long time. God knows you this much, and He valued this much. He valued your life this much, and He makes time about thinking about our days, planning our steps. Knitting us together. He doesn't make any accidents. He knows all of our days. He not only knows all our personal days, but He knows all the days who have lived in the past and all the future as well, all those people. And this is a massive number that we'll never be able to fathom. We will truly never be able to fathom. Imagine... The amount of people here right now on earth. Imagine that. 8.2 billion, give or take. Roughly 8 billion, with a B, here on earth. If we started counting right now to 1 billion, do you know how long it would take us? 95 years. 95 years. If you start counting right now to 1 billion... It would take you 95 years. That's giving you about three seconds to say uh, every word, every number. It will take you 95 years. That's just 1 billion. Now imagine if you were to count to 8.2 billion, eight hours a day is your full-time job. That's what you do. You go home and you count. It would take you roughly 761 years to get to that number. God doesn't just know you on a first name basis. And he doesn't just count you. But he knows your life and he knows how you're going to spend it. This gives me a sense of awe and wonder at how God truly does know us. God knew when the Israelites were going to go into captivity, yet he still had a plan for them. Jeremiah 29.11 is sometimes misquoted. And we forget that God is promising that he has a plan for them after they're taken out of exile, after captivity. They're going to first have to go through it. He says, this, this, is what he, this is what he says. For thus says the Lord, 
when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you, and I will fulfill you to your promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and hope. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. And he continues in that, in that verse. He knows us really well. While he knows us, this does not mean that he's controlling us or, or that we're little puppets. But he cares for us. Because he gave us free will to choose him and to receive his love and his grace. I know that my kids are going to make mistakes. I can, I can assume the outcome. But I don't control the outcome. This is God. We act, we make plans while God knows the outcome. Trust the outcome. Trust that God has a valuable purpose for your life. Lastly, let's desire what the Lord desires. How precious to me are your thoughts is what David says. Oh God, how vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they are more than sand. Even if I went to sleep and I awoke and I tried to count them, trying to measure the size of God's thoughts are too much to fathom. David desired to have what the Lord had. He desired that same zeal. The Lord's enemies became David's enemies. He says in, uh, in verses 19 through 22, listen to this. Listen to this right, right, really quick. He says, oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. O men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malice intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. That's strong language. Wait a minute. I thought we were called to love our neighbors. Not hate, what? We got to remember the context that David was writing. He was a military leader fighting on behalf of God's chosen people. The nations who he was at war against were nations against God directly. Today, we must remember who our enemy is. Paul writes in Ephesians 6.12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. David Desires to have the same zeal that the Lord has. Love what God loves. Hate what God hates. What does God hate? Sin. What does God love? People. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but the spiritual realm. David finishes up this prayer by just simply pleading with God to continue to search his heart and his thoughts. See if there's anything grievous in me. He says, convict me. Start with me, O Lord. I don't want to be your enemy. He essentially says, search my heart. Bring things to surface. Bring things to light. Teach me to hate my own sin. Help me win the battle over my my evil desires so that I can... Be led in the way of everlasting or eternal life. That's my prayer for us. That's a, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, that's a tough prayer to actually pray. Do we want to be walking around like Bigfoot? Trying to be the undefeated champion of hide and seek? Because let me tell you, we can't do it with God. As Jaden comes up to lead us in a time of worship, as we reflect on this passage, I want to remind us how just bold this prayer really is. If you have never responded to the Lord, maybe you're like, man, okay, yeah, I I get all this stuff. I, I know... I've heard it said before that God knows me. 
but are you allowing him to really search your heart? Do you really trust him with your life? Because he loves you more than you can even imagine. He sent his one and only son who was born of a baby, who we're going to be celebrating. It's almost Christmas. But let me tell you, Jesus didn't stay a baby, but he lived to be a man. God's one and only son, he came to die a gruesome death. Imagine that number, 8.2 billion people. That's just the number that are living right now that he died for. There's so many more than that. All the past, all the present, and the future. He died for everyone's sins. He died so that you can have life, eternal life. I can't fathom how much God loves us. How Jesus truly cares for us. He sees you. He knows where you're at. So in a minute, I'm just going to be in the back. And if you've never responded to God's word, you've never trusted him with your life, come and talk to me, please. Do not leave today. Continue to worship him today. I plead with you. Father, I thank you so much for knowing us beyond we can even imagine. You knew us even before we were in our mother's womb and you had a plan for us. Father, I pray that if there is someone here today who has never given their whole entire identity to you, Father, I pray that you would draw them to you right now in this moment. I pray for those in the room who are just discouraged by life, Father. I pray that you would just fill them with joy. Give us peace. Comfort us in this moment. Thank you so much for blessing us. Thank you for giving us grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and worship him.